on this day. You hear the cries for justice. So we're, I'm wearing purple vestments so as to pray for all who have died at the hands of unjust others. All for, at, at the hands of all forms of violence throughout our lands, throughout our world. It is the funeral day of Andrea, so we unite our prayers for all victims of abuse of one kind or another with the prayers of the nation for Andrea. We are praying also for the intentions of Rock's siblings on the 90th birthday of Veronica Murray. Is she with us? No. For the intentions of the of Patsy and family and Roger's intentions for healing for John and Eugene Mulhall, also for Kenny Shim, and in thanksgiving with Cook and Indra Joseph, and blessings for Anna and Ava and for the happy repose of the souls of Odette Nikom and Paul Giro and Winifred Miranda. We have been praying for a lady from Shreveport, Louisiana, as she struggled with her breathing with the COVID virus. So today we are thanking God that she is off of the ventilator. She's opened her eyes and she's breathing. So we pray for her husband and for her two children, her prayer group, and all who are interceding for her continued recovery. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our own feelings and call to mind those sins because of those failings as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The serpent was the most subtle of all the wild beasts that the Lord God had made. It asked the woman, did God really say you were not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees in the garden but of the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it nor touch it under pain of death. Then the serpent said to the woman, no, you will not die. God knows in fact that on the day you eat it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. 
The woman saw that the tree was good to eat and pleasing to the eye, and that it was desirable for the knowledge that it could give. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She gave some also to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed thick leaves together to make themselves long clothes. The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The word of the Lord. Happy the man whose offense is forgiven. Happy the man whose offense is forgiven, whose sin is remitted. Or happy the man to whom the Lord imputes no guilt, in whose spirit is no guile. But now I have acknowledged my sins, my guilt I did not hide. I said, I will confess my offense to the Lord, and you, Lord, have forgiven the guilt of my sin. So let every good man pray to you in the time of need. The floods of water may reach high, but him they shall not reach. You are my hiding place, O Lord. You save me from distress. You surround me with cries of deliverance. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Returning from the district of Tyre, Jesus went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee, right through the Decapolis region. And they brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech. And they asked him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, put his finger into the man's ears and touched his tongue with spittle. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and he said to, the, to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened and the ligament of his tongue was loosened and he spoke clearly. And Jesus ordered them to tell no one about it, but the more he insisted, the more widely they published it, their admiration was unbounded. He has done all things well, they said. He makes the deaf hear and the dumb speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. When I was preparing this, I thought, why do we have to have that reading at carnival time? <laughs> but you see, to understand the various directions that we could take, not just at carnival time, 
not just in the horrible murders, rapes, and forms of violence that we have seen taking place. It's not a time to blame. It's not Adam and Eve to blame. It's not the killers to blame. I believe that we find an answer to the behavior that we see around us in the seven deadly sins, lust, gluttony, greed, sloth, wrath, envy, and pride. But we get an even bigger hint in the book of Genesis in today's reading from chapter 3 when we recognize that not only Adam and Eve, but human beings like ourselves, it is when we depart from God in a feeling of independence, needing to have our own way, needing to do something, to live life differently from how God would want it knowing that the tree in the middle of the garden, it is from that tree that represents God's presence and power. It is when we want to take that power into our own hands that we commit the seven deadly sins, that we have to rush quickly and make a skimpy costume of a loincloth with fig leaves. It is the cover-up, you see, because we will not admit that deep and inherent in Adam and Eve and all of us is that need to rebel. And it is in rebellion that we depart from what God's will really is. So as we are coming close to Lent, I actually was going to make a joke with you at the beginning and say, well, there's no carnival, that's why we are dressed up for Lent. But the thing is, there is a carnival, not, just, not the one that we frown on, not the kind that we frown on, because joy is of the Lord. Celebration comes from the Holy Spirit welling up inside of us. And yes, we need to do things well and not according to the rhythm of the world. So this carnival, we can celebrate remembering the road march comes from the king himself, that the rhythm is from the peace of the Holy Spirit beating in our hearts, breathing with us, to be in sync with the master, music master, the master DJ himself, God, the God of all creation. So let's stand and pray that we would restore the rhythm, the pitch, the enjoyment to God's way and only his way, Lord, hear us. For the intentions of Rock and siblings on the birthday of Veronica Murray, for Roger's intentions and Patsy and family, Lord, hear us. For healing for John and Eugene Mulhall and Kenny Shim, Marjorie Rivers, Lord, hear us in thanksgiving with Kirk and Indra Joseph and blessings for Anna and Ava, Lord hear us. For the happy repose of the soul, souls of Odette Nicom, Paul Giro and Winifred Miranda, Andrea Barath, Ashanti and all other victims. In the who died in the hospital, who died around our country at the hands of violent ones. Eternal rest grant to all of them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. 
May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus the Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts from violence to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we beg you, Make holy these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Amen. 
in a similar way on that same evening. He took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also, together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that keeps us apart from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Archbishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with her blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, who is our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. The power and the glory are yours now and forever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of Christ stand guard and stand victorious over violence, and may the blood of Christ wash away the iniquity, inequity, and the blood that has been spilled senselessly. For those of us who are unable to be present at the Eucharist and receive Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity, we have the assurance that whenever we open our hearts to him, he comes to us. Let us pray. Jesus, although at this time I am unable to receive you sacramentally, I believe and I entreat you to make your home within my heart. Permeate my soul with the sweet fragrance of your presence. Give me grace to say yes to all that you ask of me and to live each day according to your holy will. Amen.
Jesus. Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may God Almighty bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your lives. announcement again reminding people about Ash Wednesday that we have three masses here 7 a.m. 12 noon and 5 p.m. and it is recommended that you register at our receptionist downstairs they can take the information or you can call us 235-5510 also the Archbishop is allowed because of the limited spaces in the churches for Thursday and Friday as well if people cannot make Ash Wednesday that they can receive ashes so Ash Thursday and Ash Friday. So for here, it'll be at our regular midday mass as well. Now, the church has also been announcing for men that from Monday, they're starting a 33-day consecration to St. Joseph. But as the Archbishop said last week, men, you have to invite. The ladies just love to come. So all are welcome to do the consecration, if you like. Our Trinity TV will be carrying it at 6 p.m., starting from Monday evening and going through the 33 days. At our doors, we have a little prayer card to St. Joseph. If you would like, you can certainly take one with you. Have a lovely day. God bless. Happy the man who wanders with the Lord. Happy the man who knows how to live. Happy the man never seeks reward giving because he loves to give he seeks no gold he wants no gain he knows those things are all in vain he seeks no praise nor honor to his only motto to your own self be true happy the the man